Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for coming here to New Speak House um, to tonight's event with Catherine Marr. Um, I'm Lucy Crompton Reid, I'm the Chief Executive of Wikimedia UK, and we're the UK based um, chapter for the global Wikimedia movement. So, hello, I'm Catherine Marr, I am the Executive Director of the Wikimedia Foundation. For those of you who do not know, the Wikimedia Foundation is an organization that is based in San Francisco, California, in the United States. And we operate um, the website of Wikipedia and Wikimedia, basically. Um, if you have seen some of the fundraising banners, what you have, and if you've supported some of them, what you're doing is you're supporting the operation of the Wikimedia sites and projects. And really, I think what you're doing in a more meaningful way is you're supporting free knowledge for the world and the communities that make that possible, including Wikimedia UK. Um, but I'll talk a little bit more about sort of the extent of what Wikimedia is. The foundation is one part of a global ecosystem that keeps Wikimedia and Wikimedia values thriving and running. We are certainly just one part of it. We see ourselves as being part of a global community. So that was supposed to be the slide about the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, that is an image of our offices. They are full of books, which is what you would expect from a group of people who really love encyclopedias. Uh, we're about 300 people uh, who work at the Wikimedia Foundation. And we are all over the world, so only about a third of the folks who work with us are based in San Francisco. The rest tend to be very distributed. That's very much a commitment to who we are as an organization because we want people who really truly represent the full scope and scale of the communities that we serve, the languages that they speak, the geographies that they're in. So those of you who are Wikimedians may be familiar with th this sentence. Uh, the vision of Wikimedia is a world in which every single human can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. It is, to my way of thinking, a beautiful and aspirational statement. It asks and calls upon each one of us to bring our knowledge to the world. It asks each of us to participate in knowledge, not just consume. It says that there is room for everybody to have a voice in the way that knowledge is created. Um, it is a very active statement, and I think that it's something that is really inspiring because it also says the sum of all knowledge, and yet we know knowledge is being created every single day. And so it's a statement and a vision that calls on us to continuously be working to achieve it, an asymptotic statement, if you will, because we'll never actually reach it. And for me, that's really inspirational because it means that wherever you turn, there is more work to be done. Um, and so how are we doing against that vision? Well, uh, this is where we started. You may have, a lot of people think Wikipedia hasn't changed too much, but I'm here to prove to you that it has. Uh, this was the original homepage of Wikipedia very early on. I don't know exactly when. Oh, it looks like 20th of December 2001. So uh, just about two or so months after Wikipedia was first created, you can see current news, breaking events, philosophy, mathematics, natural science, very encyclopedic in nature. Um, this is one of my favorite articles. This is one of the first articles about... <laughs> yeah, if you can't read that, it's okay, I'm going to zoom in. <laughs> a standard poodle is the dog by which all others are measured. Wikipedians are really funny. <laughs> I love them so much. <laughs> but Wikipedia has changed a lot. This is actually the article for the poodle today. As you can see, it has lots of citations. It's very well resourced. Uh, it is much more substantive in nature. Um, I still think the first one was funny. Uh, but this is what Wikipedia looks like today, and this is just one of the more than 40 million articles that exist, 45 million articles, that exist across nearly 300 languages um, across all of our different projects. Now, some of those are really large. The English Wikipedia is the largest, with more than 5.4 million articles. Some of these are very small and have about 1,000 articles. And so you can see that knowledge is certainly something that is not yet fully captured in our projects. We have a lot more work to do, and I'm going to talk more about that. This, these are the people who make Wikimedia possible, or these are some of them. Um, there are many of them. Now, over the course of any given month, about a quarter of a million people contribute to Wikimedia across a variety of different languages and projects, not just Wikipedia, but some of the other Wikimedia projects I'll talk about a little bit more later. Uh, this is an image that was taken at one of our events of some of those Wikimedians, and they come from every place that you can imagine, every corner of the globe. Wikimedia on a monthly basis receives visits from around 1.4 billion devices. 
it sort of goes up a little bit uh, in the school year and down a little bit when the school year is not in. So <laughs> unsurprisingly, we also get lulls during the holiday breaks and the like. Um, but it, it always is a, a, around about 1.2 to 1.4, sometimes 1.5 billion devices. We don't know exactly how many people that is because of our privacy policies. Uh, this represents the number of or places in the world that have some sort of organization that is dedicated to supporting Wikimedia. So Wikimedia UK, of course, is one of these. But you can see that uh, across the world, there are people who are very passionate about Wikimedia. Pretty much anywhere you go, you will meet a Wikimedian. And Wikipedia is so much more than just the articles and encyclopedia itself. Uh, this was a recent study that came out that said that things that are referenced on Wikipedia actually become a resource and influence the way that science research is conducted and what it actually focuses on. So the more that information is in Wikipedia, the more influence it actually has on our dialogue around what it is that we're learning. This is true as well. Um, doctors love Wikipedia. Don't worry, they probably check other sources too, but this is, this is definitely a part. We know that we're a tremendous resource, and not just in the West. We know that Wikipedia is actually a really significant resource for folks in places in the world in which access to medical textbooks, um, they tend to be out of date, they tend to be very expensive, they tend not to be in folks' native languages. This is a part of what Wikipedia is and does. And this was an article that came out after a study from Harvard found that people who participate in Wikipedia tend to, uh, if they come in with a particular partisan bias, over time, if they stick with it, they become more neutral, making Wikipedia one of the only places I know where you go to disagree on the internet and become more reasonable as a result. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're not just Wikipedia. Uh, these are two of our other really large projects, Wikimedia Commons and Wikidata. Wikimedia Commons has more than 40 million freely licensed media files, uh, almost as many media files as Wikipedia has articles, and Wikidata has so many items in it. Anyone from the hackathon today be able to tell me how many items? No. What was that? 55 million. 55 million items in Wikidata. Um, this is our structured and linked data set uh, that I tend to think is very much an emblematic um, experiment of where Wikipedia and Wikimedia can grow into the future. Uh, this is an example of a map from DBpedia or Databasepedia, which draws on the Wikimedia ecosystem um, to create points of reference from the data sets that exist across Wikimedia. And you can see the, it's a web <laughs> of influence that the Wikimedia projects actually have across a whole wide range of the way that we think about natural language processing, the way that we think about database training for algorithms, the way that computer scientists do research in general. Uh, Wikimedia is way more influential than just the articles on the encyclopedia. So what does this tell us? It tells us that the world, not just Wikipedia, that has changed and grown. Wikimedia, um, the community is changing and growing, and the world is changing too. So uh, populations in the places where Wikipedia is best known and utilized are shrinking. You can see this is where we expect net population decreases. Wikipedia is incredibly popular in Japan and Russia uh, and all across Europe, and all of these places are where populations are in decline. And others are growing. And they are growing in places where Wikimedia is not well known or does not have great coverage. So you can see the majority of growth is coming uh, demographic wise in Sub Saharan Africa, and yet only 2.5% of the content with the geolocation associated with it on Wikipedia is actually about the continent of Africa. 2.5%, despite it being second largest continent on the planet, home to a billion people, cradle of civilization, you name it, it's a bit of a problem there, a bit of a gap. Means of knowledge production has been changing, of course, over time. Um, and not just knowledge production, but the way that we consume and trust and have faith in institutions has been changing as well. We can all talk about fake news and propaganda and misinformation and overall trust in media institutions, but also investment in research and in the sciences and in the secondary sources that Wikipedia relies on. Um, interfaces are changing. I don't know that we're all going to walk around with VR helmets, but we certainly are experiencing interfaces that go well beyond the browser. And we have questions, of course, about what does this mean for Wikipedia, which is primarily a browser-based interface. And um, I already mentioned this, but one of the things that we found, as I said, is this trust in, institu in institutions is on the decline, meaning that people are really shifting their trust away from institutions like 
institutions of government, institutions of the judiciary, institutions like the free press, and into institutions that are into influencers and personal trust networks. The, the internet as a whole has gone from being a place in which people see it as a information medium to seeing it as a communication medium. And this is the result of the way that younger generations are coming online and experiencing the internet as a native experience as opposed to something that is an additive experience to their lives. So with all of these sort of things that are happening in the world, and these are just some of the top highlights, over the course of the last year, we at Wikimedia thought, gosh, this probably has an influence for our future. So we're 17 years old. We want to think out into the future and say, uh, let's say 2030. We were 15 when we started asking ourselves these questions. It would be 29 and 2030. What does it mean, and how do we want to evolve in response? I think of Wikipedia and Wikimedia as being very organic. They change in response to your edits, right? They change in response to your contributions. So we should change in response to the way the world is changing, too. And so we asked our Wikimedians about their hopes and their fears, our contributors, people who have been long-time passionate supporters of our projects. We did this in more than 20 different languages. We held salons and asked questions of people all over the world. We got people together, did these focus groups. Um, and this was just with the Wikimedians themselves. We asked, it was a really great experience and people shared with us their hopes and their fears, which I'll talk a little bit more about. We also talked to experts, people in um, the arts and in education and the cultural sector, technologists, futurists, um, you name it, pol people in policy and politics. What is it that their hopes and dreams are for free knowledge generally? What are the challenges that they anticipate? How do they see their sectors changing? Because Wikipedia touches all of these different parts of the world, we want to know how the world anticipates the change that it's going through. And here are some of the things people came up with. Uh, as you can see, knowledge gaps and biases were very highly ranked as an important issue. Health of our community, making sure that not only are people friendly and nice, um, but also that they are robust and regenerating. It doesn't help us if uh, our communities are aging out and people aren't continuously coming in and getting excited about our projects. Um, I don't know what to make of the fact that values are very low ranked. I'd like to say that that's because people feel our values very strongly, so we're not worried about them. So what did we learn? Uh, we learned a lot. Uh, we learned that Wikimedia does not serve the entire world, and we're not even close, despite that ambitious vision statement. Here are some indications of awareness among internet users. Uh, as you can see, in many in Western Europe and North America, very high awareness. Lots of people use us. But again, in some of these places where the bulk of the world's population lives and where people are coming online at rapid rates, where education literacy rates are rising, we're just not there. And we're not only not there in terms of awareness, we're not there in terms of language coverage, we're not there in terms of the, the breadth of the coverage that we have, we're not there in ways that are representative. So um, certainly an English speaker in Nigeria comes to Wikipedia and they don't necessarily see their world reflected even if they have access to a high, a, a high number of articles in a language. Um, and you, this is just another way of looking at it, the traffic by region, Europe and North America um, and Asia, but it's certainly not really equivalent to the number of people who are actually online and using the web today. So we've got a long way to go. We realize that structural inequalities prevent us from really achieving that mission of every single human, all the world's knowledge. Some of those are barriers like uh, internet access, but some of those are other barriers too around where does knowledge production come from? Who is actually creating the reliable sources upon which Wikipedia or Wikimedia relies. Um, there are a variety of other ones we can get into that more in conversation. And we need to adapt, adapt to the world's changing knowledge needs. I think that was a real conclusion for us, is that really our mission is about service, and so how do we think about what that service looks like? We should leverage new technology to achieve our mission. Um, we know that technology is changing, whether it's thinking about simple things like video, which really isn't a change, um, to thinking about how do we incorporate things like open machine learning into our projects in a way that is consistent and open with and consistent with our values. Um, more people and institutions want to join us, but they don't know how. So cultural institutions, educational institutions, scientific institutions, they see the power of being part of this open knowledge ecosystem, but they don't quite know how to get into it. Here are some of the top things that people came up with around their priorities. Healthy communities, as I mentioned, an augmented technological era, a truly global movement that's really representative of everyone in the world, being a respected source of knowledge and sort of overcoming that trust deficit, and engaging a knowledge ecosystem. So that's thinking about partners and institutions as equals and equivalents with whom we can engage. And so the direction that we came up with for our future 
is about becoming an essential infrastructure for free knowledge and open knowledge. We already are in many ways, but acknowledging this helps us understand where we are perhaps not being as successful as we would like to be, and input in helps us identify where we can do more. Um, anyone who shares our vision should be able to join us. I mentioned some of those barriers to knowledge. We really want to think about how we reduce where that friction exists so that more people can participate, more people can be a part of our work. And then we came up with these two ideas of knowledge as service. So how do we serve more people? How do we make that knowledge more accessible and more usable, more reusable? And then really importantly, knowledge equity, which is how do we ensure that the information that exists in Wikipedia is not just it, it doesn't just have a large number of articles or a large number of items in Wikidata, but it has a breadth and diversity and depth that is truly reflective of the world and actually serves the world in a meaningful way. So those are some of the things that we talked about, and that's some of the things that hopefully we'll talk a little bit more about. The future of open knowledge, just really small Time stuff. <laughs>